The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. You see, God is still interested in everybody being in his family. And he is not going to give up on that. And you've been chosen to go into your place where he sent you and glorify his name. You don't need to talk big and try to promote yourself. God is your promoter. He is the one that's going to take care of you and take you to the top. Hello, Bill Winston here, and welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, we're talking about the anointing, the anointing that is on your life and on my life as believers gives us answers that the world does not have. Remember Daniel? He was 10 times better than the people in the world. See, when you solve their problems, they're going to ask about your father. What an opportunity to witness. Praise God. Let's learn more about this in today's message. It's called Restoring the Years. It's time for us to get our peace. It's time for us to get our joy. Come on, it's time for us to get whatever God has provided for us. I want it. And I want it now. You should have joy all the time. Every time somebody see you, they just, what are you laughing about? You're always smiling about something. You say, well, something is bubbling up inside of me. He's taking you back to the garden. Just like Adam lived. A place a voluptuous living. That's what Eden represents. A place of plenty. No problems. No discomforts. No harassment. None of that. And the number one job of the Holy Spirit is going to be to remove those things. And he knows how to remove them. Isn't that wonderful? Now, there are people that don't want to hear this. The, the Satan has got such a, a grip on their thinking. Till you bring any decent good news, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Well, hey, listen, I'm, I'm thankful for them coming. But if you don't want to hear nothing the preacher says, why come? You know, because I'm preaching to believers. I'm preaching to people who are ready for a better life, who are ready for a higher life. Listen, I'm not saying greedy. I'm saying I want what's mine. If it's not mine, I don't want it. But if God says it's mine, I want it. And that Bible tells me what's mine. Say amen. Well, I, I really have enough. Then, then what you need to do is give all away what you have and believe God for some more. Because there are a lot of people out here that don't have enough. Take care of them. Since you got enough. That's pride, huh? No, we're working for God now. And that's why we're on assignment. You see, work is different from a job. Yeah. With a job, you're looking for a paycheck. But work brings forth potential. And you'd be surprised when you work and that potential comes out of you, you, you labor. You, you labor to bring forth, like a woman labors to bring forth a baby, you labor to bring forth something new that you didn't even know you could do. Because God's got it all inside of you. You remember over in Judges chapter 7 and verse 1? Just look at that. And watch this. Say anointed. anointed. 
Look what it says. And Jubrabal, who was Gideon, and all the people were, uh, that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill Moriah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with you are too many for me to give you the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me. And this is what they'll say. My own hand has saved me. You with me? Yes. Now, therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. Check it out. And their return of the people, 20 and 2,000. And there remain only 10,000. Watch this. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water and I will try them for thee. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, glory to God, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whosoever say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought them down, the people, unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, every one that laps of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, glory to God, him shall you set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon the knee to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was about how many? 300. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees and drank water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites unto the hand, thine hand, and let all the other people go, every one into his place. So what am I saying? God knows that if you can do it, there's no room for the anointing. See, where it kicks in is where you leave off. See, where, where it, it kicks in when you don't have any more ability or strength, come on, to do what he's called you to do. Can I show you something? Put up Job, please. Job chapter 20, chapter 32. Starts at verse 6. This is what Elihu, son of Barakel, the Bizite, said, I'm a young man, and you are all old and experienced. That's why I kept quiet, and I held back from joining in the discussion. I kept thinking, experience will tell. The longer you live, the wiser you become. But I see I was wrong. It's God's spirit in a person. The breath of the Almighty One that makes wise human insight possible. The experts have no corner on wisdom. Getting old doesn't guarantee good sense. So I've decided to speak up, listen well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. Let's stop right there. Sing it. Sing it. So just cause you old don't mean you got some sense. Watch this. Just because you're experienced does not mean you're operating with wisdom. You see what I'm saying? I'm saying you and I are going to step in with a whole nother level of spiritual understanding. Yes. Yes. Look at verse 8 in that same series of scripture in the Amplified Translation and just see what that says. But there is a vital force, a spirit of intelligence in man. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. Because God can put a spirit of intelligence. 
You, are you here? Yes. See, God is not sending you in the world to compete. He's sending you to dominate. And don't make the excuse about, I've never done this before. He's not asking you whether you've done it before. He didn't ask Adam, Adam, have you ever named animals before? He said, name them. Come on now. See, he's going to lead you into a place that is not familiar to you. He's, he's going to lead you into a situation that you've never been in before. Yes, he's going to lead you to a problem you've never had seen before. Yes, but you're going to solve it better than anybody else. You're not going to deal with the wisdom of men, but you're going to have the spirit of intelligence on you. I'm saying to you that God is about to put you in some places that might be little hard places. Don't get all shook up because he's putting you in a place usually where people are godless. In other words, they don't know the God that you know. Yes, sir. But he's putting you in there because he's about to blow up. He's about to take you from where you are to the top. Say amen. Gideon said, he said, why are you choosing me? I am not the smartest. I'm from the poorest family in the tribe. I have least education than anybody. God said, come on, because I can take the foolish things. And don't run up somebody because they seem they've been around a long time and think they know more than you. If they don't have that anointing, they do not know as much as you. And what you have to do is be bold like Daniel and say, hey, king, I know the sorcerers and the astrologers couldn't solve your problem, but give me a night with a king that I'm going to bed with the one who solved everything from the beginning of creation. So this is very important that you and I know that there is an anointing on us and in us that is going to give answers that the world does not have if we are willing to step out and make God our only source. Are you with me here? Now, I want to convince you of this in the next times that you come here. I really want to convince you of this because this is how Jesus operated. Look at Matthew chapter 13 and verse 54. This is how Jesus operated, and he's showing you this because this is the way you're going to operate. He said, and when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, whence has this man this what? Wisdom, Wisdom and what else? Mighty, Mighty works. works. See, the world is not impressed by you shouting hallelujah. Yes. What they're impressed about, you solving their problems. Yes. Say amen to this. Yes. And that, that king, Pharaoh, did not ask about Joseph's father until Joseph solved his problem. And I'm telling you, when you solve their problem, they're going to ask about your father. Now, I'm not just talking about the down and out people that ain't got no money and broke. I'm talking about people in high places because the enemy wants to keep the strategic places occupied by his people. But this is a new day. We are moving up from the bottom to the top. How do I know that we're going to the top? Because Deuteronomy in chapter 28 says that if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord our God and observe to do all his commandments and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 1 says, he's going to set you high above all nations of the earth. Verse 10, and all the people of the earth shall see that you're going to be called by the name of the Lord. They're not going to see that if you sit up and say hallelujah. That not, just because you're reading your Bible, that, that's not going to impress them. I'm telling you, God's going to give you something to impress them about. The next verse says, and the Lord shall make you plenteous and goods, fruit of your body, fruit of your great cattle, and the fruit of your ground, and the, and the land which he swear to your fathers to give you. The Lord shall open up to you his good treasure in heaven. He's going to give you rain in your land in season. 
He's going to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations. Come on, help me. Shall not borrow. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only. Come on. And not beneath. So God's going to make you the head, not the tail. The lender, not the bar. Well, Bill Winston, why is God going to do all this for me? He's going to do all this for you because of this. You're going to be the influence that's going to take people from darkness to light. He said, let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your father. You see, God is still interested in everybody being in his family. And he is not going to give up on that. And you've been chosen to go into your place where he sent you and glorify his name. You don't need to talk big and try to promote yourself. God is your promoter. He is the one that's going to take care of you and take you to the top. Say amen to that. Now, let me tell you, the church have been singing songs long enough. Right. Now, hear what I'm saying. We've been in tradition long enough. We just come in here, get a little word, feel good, go on out. Come in here next time to get a little word, those days are over. What I'm going to give you now is going to cause you to blow up. God going to put you in places that you're going to come out and people going to see you and something going to start working through you. you you've, been, you've not been so smart up until this point, but now, but now you're going to talk like you got some sense. And they're going to say, man, what happened to her? Well, she's going down there to Bill Winston Church down there, and he's been teaching something about the anointing. Say, that anointing is on me. Say, that anointing is on me. The spirit of intelligence. That spirit took Daniel to the top. That spirit took Joseph to the top. Now, wait a minute. They might try to do something against you. But Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17 said, No weapon that is formed against you, come on, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. So they can't hurt you. What happened when they threw Daniel in the lion's den? Wait, wait a minute. Did they throw him in there? So they might try to do something to you, but just stay in love. Come on now. Stay in faith and God will deliver you. I cancel all premature death right now. With long life, you're going to live. Any scheme against you, I cancel it right now from the devil. No longer will that devil harass you that the spirit of comfort is coming on you right now as I speak, and you're going to be more comfortable than you've ever been in your life. Let me just tell you one more thing. Restoring the years. I said restoring the years. Look at Psalm chapter 105 and verse 37. He said this, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Now I'm about to say something right now that you better receive it by faith. How did they get all of that? They came out of Egypt and got silver and gold, came out with silver and gold. How did they get it? They borrowed it. But they stripped the Egyptians. Yes, sir. God said, go, tell them you're going to borrow it and take it. <laughs> Watch this. Now, let me put my words in there. You ready? Yes, sir. Cause your grandmama, your great grandmama, your great great grandmama, your great great great, they all sold seed and never got a harvest. Yeah. 
Glory be to God. They all been working for the man and been underpaid. And God keeps records. I'm going to restore the years. Now give God praise. That's as far as we're going to go with that one. Somebody up in here about to get blessed. He says over in Psalm chapter 102 and verse 13, he said this, and this is what time it is. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. That's you. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time has come. See, what the devil thought yes. is that you were going to leave here without anybody ever preaching this to you. Amen. But I'm telling you, God, I showed you the other day, never forgets a seed. And your parents, grandparents, great, grand, great, 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 great have sown and never got a harvest. Yoo-hoo. God took his people and added up all that was owed them through the generations and told this generation, go and make a collection. Boy, y'all about to get blessed now, man. Ain't nobody preaching this. It takes guts to preach this stuff. Do you hear what I'm telling you? I'm saying that stuff been kept back by fraud. But that that stuff is crying out, saying, wait a minute. The hands that I'm in now, that's not my rightful owner. The people in Living Word are my rightful owner. I know, Pastor, that's too good to be true. You remember this. It's the gospel. That stands for good what? News. I'm telling you now, something is about to happen. The time to favor her. The set time. Come on. Come on. Them people didn't get paid. He told that generation that's leaving, go collect. And then he canceled the debt. And they came out of that with silver and gold. Now listen, ain't nobody mad at nobody. That's it. That's not the way you get this. You got to stay in love to get all of this. I just thought I'd tell y'all that. Because if you believe it, it's going to work for you. (laughs) Well, I trust that you were blessed by that powerful message. Now, here is an important point you want to remember. When it comes to manifesting the promise, you don't do it in your own strength. Whatever God promised you, there's power in the word. There's an anointing to bring that to pass. A lot of times what happens is we try to do it in our own strength. Well, when you do that, you make no room for the anointing. God doesn't compete with you. You know what I mean? You got to make room for God. (laughs) He knows how powerful he is. So when you make room and let's say Gideon, for example, he called Gideon. Gideon knew that he wasn't that educated. He didn't have a come from a wealthy family or anything going for him. But the anointing took over and God used Gideon with 300 men to set all of the nation free. Now that's the power of that anointing. That same anointing is on you. Study that anointing. You'll be blessed by it. Praise God. Well, this is all we have for the day. This is Bill Winston saying we love you and keep walking by faith.
You were designed for a purpose. You were not designed to merely survive through life, no matter what your situation looks like. It's not too late for God. Now is the time to operate in the power of God and take back what was stolen from you. This is your season of restoration. Call right now at 1-800-711-9327 or go online to billwinston.org to receive your very own copy of the Four Message series, Restoring the Years. In this Revelation Pack series, Dr. Bill Winston expands on the most powerful force in the universe, the anointing. These messages are sure to increase your knowledge of how to walk continually in the spirit and trusting wholeheartedly in the word of God. It's time to reach a higher level of influence and receive the generational increase you are meant to have. When you call today, you will receive this collection as your choice of CD or DVD, which is designed to offer you continual encouragement and inspiration to take dominion and advance the kingdom of God. And if you order right now, you'll also get the thousand times more anointing single teaching on your choice of CD or DVD. This life-changing message by Dr. Winston will strengthen your belief in the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. You'll learn how to use the anointing to produce His results in your life today. Peace, comfort, strength, abundance, prosperity. It's all yours with the anointing of the Holy Spirit in you. It's now time to declare the manifestation of God. God's original purpose and plan for you. Call right now, 1-800-711-9327 or visit us online at billwinston.org. Well, hello, I have written a new book. It's called Revelation of Royalty. Now this book was written because many Christians have not been receiving the divine inheritance because they really don't know their identity in Christ Jesus. They really don't know who they are. Ah, I'm talking about in the eyes of God, I'm not talking about uh, your relatives or, or the boss man or whatever, but who you are in the eyes of God, because your image affects everything. It affects how high you climb. It affects how rich you become. It affects all of that. And nobody really can affect that but you. Now, what we do is we allow other people to call us names or put us in certain positions, and we take on that identity. But God is telling you who you really are. He sees you as royalty. He sees you as one of his family. It is the richest and wealthiest family that has ever been known uh, to mankind. You are in that family if you're born again. Now, this book will help you. It'll help you identify who you are, what you have, and how to get it. We have been missing out on our inheritance, and that's wrong. We want you to get what God says is yours. The first step to it, change your image. Go and understand who God says you are and be that. Praise God. Well, this is Bill Winston saying we love you and keep walking by faith. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.